Phoenix, Peripheral Nerve Regeneration, Part 1 Peripheral nerve injuries are known to be an important medical, biological and social problem. That is why they have been in the focus of great attention in experimental and clinical studies. There are several types of nerve injury, axonotmesis and neurotmesis among them. The first one will be described later. The second one leads to interruption of nerve fibers and Schwann cell basal lamina, nerve sheaths and blood vessels. Such injury results in the division of the nerve trunk into the proximal or central and the distal or peripheral stumps. A connection of distal stump axons with the pericaria is lost. The area of the nerve fiber experiencing the di direct impact of the traumatic factor is destroyed. The nerve fibers in the proximal and distal stumps also break down, which is, however, limited only to one or two nodes of Ranvier closest to the injury site. Thus, a gap develops between the proximal and the distal stumps. The injury to blood vessels entails a filling of this gap with blood that later will turn into a blood clot. The dying cells and activated platelets generate inflammatory mediators leading to infiltration of the injury site with the leukocytes, which initially consist of neutrophils, followed by monocytes and their transformation into macrophages. Later on, fibroblasts accumulated at this site produced extracellular matrix and connective tissue scar fills this gap between the proximal and distal stumps. Here we consider uh, the occurring events on the example of a motor neuron. However, sensory and autonomic nerve fibers undergo similar changes. And one more note. Mixed nerve trunks contain axons of afferent neurons and peripheral processes of afferent neurons that are dendrites in fact. But in the literature on nerve DNA regeneration, the term axons is used instead of axons and dendrites for simplicity. The injury to nerve fibers leads to fast calcium influx in the exoplasm and generates a depolarization wave along the axon to the pericarion, which in turn contributes to transcriptional response in the nucleus. Besides retrograde signaling, local calcium accumulation at the injury site triggers calpain-dependent cleavage of cytoskeletal components that reduces membrane tension and accelerates the membrane fusion. This leads to cut axon retraction and sealing, which facilitate growth cone formation. The depolarization waves are followed within hours by dynein mediated retrograde axonal transport of substances emanating at the injury site, which activates proregenerative mechanisms in the pericaria. This results in cell bodies changes that are histologically expressed by their swelling this solution of chroma chromatophilic substance and displacement of the nuclei to the periphery of the pericaria. Another cause of transcriptional changes is the interruption of the normal supply of retrogradely transported neurotrophic factors, for example, nerve growth factor. Translational machinery is transported from the pericaria to the axon terminals where growth cones are formed. 
RNAs are transported together with their RNA binding proteins. Transport from the perikarya is complemented by direct transfer of ribosomes from Schwann cells to the exon. Local translation in the exon is one of the important components of the response to nerve injury and it is crucial for the outcome of the regeneration. It provides new molecules to sustain axonal growth and sends signals back to the perikarya to activate regenerative mechanisms. De novo synthesized proteins include transcription factors that undergo retrograde transport via binding to the impartins. The growth cone is a dilated axonal tip capable of interpreting extracellular guidance cues, transducing them into changes in the cytoskeleton and guiding axons to their proper destination. The growth cone consists of three domains the central, the transitional, and the peripheral ones. The central domain is located in the center of the growth cone that is nearest to the axon shaft. This region is composed primarily of microtubules and also contains organelles, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes, and vesicles of various sizes. Some microtubules, called pioneer microtubules, break through to the peripheral domain where they intersect and cross-link with the F-actin bundles. The transitional domain is located between the central and the peripheral domains and contains the so-called F-actin arcs. They form a mechanochemical barrier for microtubules attempting to invade the peripheral domain. The peripheral domain ends with several fine extensions termed philopodia or microspikes. They contain bundles of the affecting filaments that are responsible for their shape and support. Philopodia can extend several micrometers beyond the leading edge of the growth cone. Their membrane contains receptors and cell adhesion molecules that are important for axon growth and guidance. Between the philopodia there are lamellipodia, flat regions of dense affecting meshwork that have a veil-like appearance. The barbed or plus ends of the F-actin filaments are oriented towards the cell membrane of the growth cone, while their pointed or minus ends are directed towards the central domain. In the stationary state of the growth cone, continuous polymerization occurs at the plus ends and depolymerization at the minus ends. Free actin subunits are recycled back to the plus ends. It is accompanied by translocation of the F actin filaments in the direction of the central domain, which is ensured by non muscle myosin 2. This process is called actin retrograde flow. The growth cones are characterized by the highly dynamic nature that allows them to respond to the surrounding environment by rapidly changing direction in response to various stimuli. There are three stages of axon outgrowth – protrusion or advancement, engorgement and consolidation. During protrusion, the F-actin filaments grow toward the leading edge and this leads to the corresponding extension of the growth cone. During engorgement, actin arcs depolymerize 
clearing the region for microtubules to invade deeper into the growth cone, bringing vesicles and organelles. The interaction of actin with an adhesive substrate causes the filaments to be stabilized. Finally, consolidation occurs when the effectin at the neck of the growth cone depolymerizes and site philopodia retract. The membrane then shrinks to form a new segment of the axon shaft containing the bundle of tightly packed microtubules. The effectin arcs are re-established and microtubules are limited again to the new central domain. The iterative cycle of protrusion, engorgement and consolidation results in exon elongation. The local translation that occurs in the growth cones plays an important role in their responsiveness to guidance cues. Actin molecules are added to the growth cones philopodia that grow in the attractive direction. Inside other philopodia, actin molecules are degraded through the ubiquitination of the translated proteins. Growth cones need adhesion to the substrate for their growth. The substrate may be presented by macromolecules of the extracellular matrix or membranes of other cells. Growth cones have transmembrane receptors, that is, integrins, that form complexes called molecular clutches to bind effect in fibers to adhesive substrate. Such adhesion provides the mechanical resistance that enables the actin network to overcome the rearward current of retrograde flow. Further effect in fibers polymerization leads to the leading edge protrusion and the growth cone translocation forward when new molecular clutch is formed. The movement of the growth cones is controlled by their sensory function that is dependent on attractive or repulsive cues from the extracellular matrix. There are many guidance cues in the regenerating axons environment. Among adhesive substrate-bound cues, the best studied are molecules of the extracellular matrix, laminin, fibronectin, and cell adhesion molecules, cadherins, integrins. Diffusible hematropic cues are netrins, semaphorins, growth factors, and neurotransmitters. The receptors on the growth cone membrane interact with the extracellular cues, providing information about the environment. This information is analyzed by the intracellular signaling machinery that leads to an appropriate response, for example, a change of growth direction. During their growth, regenerating axons branch and form collaterals. The branching occurs when the growth cone splits during the engorgement phase. Collateral is formed from the axon shaft independent of the growth cone. In this case, when invaded by microtubules, the axon generates philopodia and lamellipodium and develops further into a branch extending from the axon shaft. The established collateral with a growth cone at the end protrudes independently. Thus, a tissue bridge between the central and the peripheral stumps is invaded by nerve sprouts, the quantity of which is several times more than that in the central stump. Regenerating axons are accompanied by Schwann cells that together form the so-called regeneration unit. To be continued.